But, but your your clan is eagle, right? You mm -hmm. said, yeah. yeah. My mom is eagle. My dad's killer. But I I always fall like you said. You follow your, your mother's side. Yeah. Um. So my own eagle, and I still am an eagle, I guess. seven in the morning and a welcome back to the channel welcome here to Moresby Island off the coast of Canada and I am almost leaving to go and explore the southern part of this island well actually there's loads of little islands that I'm gonna explore but I'm gonna do it in a different way than normal because there are no roads and well basically independent travel is quite difficult and I think it's possible but then I should have arranged it a long time ago and well I don't really have a planning, so that's all a little bit impossible for me. So to go and see those islands kind of last minute, I am joining a tour. So it's not really my style. I, I hope I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah, I just really, really want to see some of those places. Um, I read about it a while back and it just sounds so fascinating that I don't want to miss it. So let's go. All right, bye Alaska. See you soon. Life jacket on, this is a jacket and life jackets in one. Are now on the boat. I do not know where we're going right now, but uh, the trip is starting, so I'm pretty excited. There, and just one step there and you're good. All right, we've gotten ashore on one of the islands. I already forgot the name. And I'm uh, gonna walk a little bit in the forest here. All right, this place, it's stunning. There's like these low hanging clouds that just make it look amazing. Look, so mysterious, right? So I'm just gonna walk a little bit in the woods here to show you basically how amazingly beautiful it is here and actually the woods here it's actually a rainforest you wouldn't think it but it's rainforest and it's so lush and green and and there are a lot of eagles around here but they're the bold eagles with the with the white head and they're enormous and for some reason they really like nesting on the islands here so there are loads of them
This is Louise Island, which is the third largest island. And the forests here are just so magical. And the forests of Haida Gwaii are famous for all the moss that is growing everywhere. But in reality, that's not really how the forest is supposed to look like. Because all the deer that I saw in the last video as well, they were introduced here. I'm not exactly sure when they were introduced but they were brought here as a food source but because they don't have any natural predators their numbers have just exploded and i've heard there are now 300,000 deer so and what they do is the deer they eat all the undergrowth so because they eat undergrowth you get all this moss kind of taking over um, and that's why the forest looks like this now So I am now on Kuna Island and there used to be a Haida village here. There used to be 600 people living here in 26 very big houses. But unfortunately, as I also talked about in the previous video and the one before, when European traders came here, they brought smallpox. And over the course of three waves of smallpox, only between 30 and 40 people survived. And they all moved to Skidigate, which is the place where I came off the ferry, when I took the ferry from the mainland. Um, that's where most of the Haida people that survived smallpox um, gathered in the end. So there are two clans of Haida people, the Raven clan and the Eagle clan. And this used to be a Raven clan village because the chief was a raven, but they would marry from the other clan. So the raven clan would marry with the eagle clan and vice versa, of course. And it would depend on the clan of your mother that would determine the clan that you belong to. And the houses that they used to build were absolutely incredible. And the Haida people love and value cedar wood because it's so strong and it lasts so long. So what you see here, this is actually the foundation of one of those houses. So you got the cedar here and here. But another thing that the Haida people are very famous for are their totems. And they are incredible, very elaborate. And they made them for different reasons. Every house had a big totem in front. And they would also make um, memorial totems for people that passed away. And especially chiefs, of course, got the most elaborate totems. And the majority of them, they've all been moved to museums in, I think, mostly British Columbia, which was in accordance with the Haida people because they want to preserve them. And then some of them were left behind and so they could go back to the earth. And then there's another type of totem which they would make to indicate the amount of pot latches that were being held under the supervision of one chief. And a pot latch was basically a gathering or a party. So Kuna Island was also known as the party island <laughs> because, for example, if you look at this one, every ring indicates one pot latch. So this chief definitely <laughs> held a lot of parties. And so I don't know exactly what they did with the pot latches. I believe uh, gifts were being exchanged and there was dancing and yeah, basically a big gathering or a big party. Were the, the facial tattoos always part of Haida culture? Well, all, all my grandmothers were fully tattooed. O only women, not men? No, men were Men too. also? Yeah, but I'm, I always just think of my, my an ancestor women more in that way because um, the women were the mat matriarchs and the chief always listened to the women in any decision making. It was the women that led the the chief on different things and how it should be done. Yeah. It was. It's even told that even strategizing, like if they had to go war, it was even the women that strategized in the canoes. The women were the... It kind of got lost for a while when contact first happened, but then it, it, it came, back came back in the 40s where the women said, 
No, we need to do it this way again. So before smallpox, when this was a lively village, it would actually look very different because also on this island, like all the other islands, deer were introduced here and because they eat cedar saplings and they eat all the flowers, everything looks very different from how it looked like back then. arrived on Skangwai Island and this is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it's a very important site for the Haida people. There are a lot of standing poles on this island which I am super super excited to see and hopefully I can talk to some of the Haida watchmen. So basically throughout the summer there are people from the Haida community that will come here. They're called the watchmen and basically they are here to make sure that the site remains intact and there's no vandalism or theft or anything like that. So your, your name is Morgan, but can you repeat your Haida name? My Haida name is Gaugaya, which means good fisherman. And, uh, and I am because everybody always says, are you a good fisherman? So, <laughs> so I'll give you a few words in Haida. Okay, yeah. So our dialect here is, um, say we'll say halibut will be hagu. Same in Masset, but say nana, uh, grandmother, grandfather will be Nanai Chinai in, in, in our dialect down in Skidigat. Right. And Masset, they'll say Nani Chini. Oh, it's, so it's quite so different. It's a little already. bit different. But yeah. uh, say, we'll say dried, dried salmon, which is China, will be, um, will be Jilji. Yeah. And in Masset, they'll say Jilts. Right. Yeah, so that's how much of a difference our dialect is from there. But your your clan is Eagle, right? You mm -hmm. said, yeah. yeah. My mom is Eagle. My dad's Killer. But I I always fall like you said. You follow your your mother's side. Yeah. Um. So my own's Eagle, and I so I'm an Eagle, I guess. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. And in um, in Kuna we met Didi. Yeah, yeah. She's um, her mom and my mom are first cousins. Oh really? So, yeah. Oh, so she's related. second cousin. Ah. Yeah, that's how it works in the villages. Um, like, um, I'm probably related to three quarters of the people out of the in our village, which yeah. are 960 something people. Yeah. And we have the biggest clan, which are probably 460 people. Um, yeah. And if all the people in our clan all survived from one little girl survived from one village down here and they took her to Skidigat and that's where all of our clan came from was her. So one girl that one survived girl smallpox. Yeah, one little girl that survived. And wow. all our whole clan is from her. Yeah. So Amy Collinson. So that was her English name. Okay. But not sure what her Haida name was. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So, so you I must, if you meet someone, you must check. Yeah, Are we yeah. not oh, yeah, too yeah, closely yeah. related? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly that. And then, um, so here's a few more words for you. Okay. Um, say, um, good morning uh -huh. would be Singaila. Singaila. Yeah. And good afternoon would be Sintajiga La. Sintajiga La. Yeah. yeah. So ah. I come from Chieftainship Blood. So from the young, young Collinson clan. Okay. So, yeah. I do, I guess I should have been, um, it's always the second oldest son of the chief that gets next in line. The second oldest? Yeah, I think. Oh, right. The second oldest, yeah. Ah, so okay. whatever reason they do that, um, yeah, so, um, but I'm actually the third, so, <laughs> so <laughs> you, I wouldn't, you wouldn't, no, you wouldn't, wouldn't be, be chief. A, no, I wouldn't be, uh, <laughs> So I'm now walking in what used to be the village, there would also be around three four hundred people would have lived here and right here this was the long house of the chief so as i said before somebody from the eagle clan would always marry somebody from the raven clan and the other way around so that also meant that every village would have both eagle clan and raven clan so then a village like this would have a chief of the eagle a chief of the raven and a chief for the entire village and this was the house the long house of the chief of the entire village and it was massive so it was 50 feet by 50 feet 
and you can see all the poles are all made of cedar wood so you'd have the side poles and then those were the ones from the roof that came down so those were being held up originally and then they would dig this pit out so that in the middle of the pit that would be the fireplace and people could gather all around and I as I, I think understood there would be three levels cut out and that would be where the people would be sleeping so in the long house of the chief the actual entire village all of the people of the village would fit inside for a gathering or any important message that had to be told so each long house would have a standing pole in front and all of those those are removed here and placed in different museum but the standing poles that you see here you can see for example it's right against the sun so I hope you can see it but there you see two eyes and a beak and here oh this one it's a bit better visible you can see there a row of of teeth and also see you see there the beak and then the eyes on top over there and on this one you can see wings and that one you can see the hands and the face on top as well so all of these standing poles were put to commemorate chiefs that had passed away so on top of the poles they would build a little box that would actually contain the remains of the chief now you can see it quite well on this one you see right on the top there's a little box that would then have the remains of that chief so given how many standing poles for chiefs there are here that also tells you something about how long people have been living here on this island or on this place but all of these poles and all of the poles that were made for the longhouses they're made of cedar wood as I said but the interesting thing is that on this island there's no cedar growing so that also shows the dedication to get those huge huge logs of cedar to the island so they'd have to log them on other islands and carry them here on canoes amazing right this is why i came to Haida Gwaii such a fascinating culture and it's impossible to learn everything about the Haida people in such a short time but it's really really fascinating <laughs> So I am now on Rose Harbor. I will tell you a little bit more about the place later. But first I'm gonna have a shower. In the shower, this is how it works. Build a fire up here, and then uh, that heats up that tank, I think. And then over here is the shower. How nice is that?
That was amazing. <laughs> huh? How awesome is that? Oh, <laughs> I'm alive! <laughs> so, Rose Harbor, this place used to be a whaling station um, from the early 1900s until the 40s, I believe. And after that, it has always been owned by, I think, different companies. So right now, this is also a private property. I think it's the only place on this entire part of uh, Haile Gwaii. So all the rest is all Parks Canada, all part of the national park, except for this place. It is, <laughs> it has been such a beautiful day. Here, let me show you kind of the view from here. Look at all these flowers, by the way, it's stunning. But yeah, this is the view. The sun is still quite high, even though it's already 7.30 at night. So I am now going to see what's for dinner. And uh, yeah, so that was it for today. I'm gonna end this video now. Uh, that was it for today. And um, what a fantastic day. I learned so much and it's just so gorgeous. And the water is just so incredibly clear everywhere. I'm making sure you can hear. I mean, I don't know how well you can see it, but the water everywhere, it is crystal clear. Really, really amazing. So yeah, that was it for today. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe down below, and then I'll see you in the next video.